going to give you a quick tour um, around the lockers and that and uh, show you what we keep on on board the truck right okay the first uh, the locker i'll start from the rear is our main control locker and from here i can actually control all the beacons and all the working lights and whatever just from this little panel i've got a panel in the cab i can control and a panel out here so I can alternate what beacons I want, what loading lights I want, all from this panel here, which is quite handy. A little touch screen, turn that off now. Are we all off? Yeah, there we go, just all touch button, nice and easy to operate, nice and quick. Right, um, to left here, this is a while in, um, obviously, remote. In case I get problems with these cordless remotes, the batteries goes, I can just go straight to that. Uh, the red buttons you see, um, on the control panel and these remotes, they're stop buttons. So any problems with the truck, the winches overrunning or whatever, the boom won't stop. Just hit these buttons and that will immediately cut all the, elect all the electrics to the back and the hydraulics will stop. Little controls the winches to declutch and this is the tensioners for the winches to, to when you're reeling in after the job, it's got a little bit of tension to stop the winches rolling up one side. So it's supposed, but it's supposed to keep a bit of tension. So it's supposed to go on the drum nice and straight. Um, these two buttons here, these uh, offside jack or near side jack, and we were sort of class E's, perhaps you would call them as feet or spades. And that's mainly for winching purposes to, you say, to, to get them right into the aggregate and just say, and to make a solid platform for winching. This button does the boom up and down and to me right there's a little gauge here and um, a, a torch that will have it wired in it's quite handy a little cordless torch a few little bits and pieces here a few cable ties a few little bungees screwdriver and whatever just a couple of easy things that i might possibly need to get the bumper off a bus quick save mucking about going to hunt it in in the toolbox a few gloves and whatever you here okay the next locker we got to the right of me i've got some chains these are light chains we don't use for the for winching all these are retaining chains i would probably say and this is to keep the axle onto the forks and we chain them around the, the pedestals so um yeah that they're retaining chains not winching as you say the good old club hammer some extra gloves the dirty bin some some bags for, to cover the half shafts Stop any mess and that and plenty plenty of old towels and that oil pan and purely just say that, that that's designed specially to go under the half shafts and that's when you pull a half shaft you don't get no oil on the road and whatever around the wheel so yeah it's quite handy so it fits both sides a bit more of a lip to get into there on the smaller trucks yeah, very handy a couple of little bins there if I could put me half shaft bolts and wd and silicon spray uh, to the left I've got some uh, wheel straps and some smaller straps just to, for mainly for cab work right and the two um, impact guns I got three quarter and a half inch if I was just going to get one gun I would uh, get the three quarter of a three quarter sockets really the thing for me really was buy a three quarter and get a stubby half inch one or I can mainly use that to wind off um, prop shaft bolts and that a little, little extension that would be ideal really for that maybe that's on the shopping list next right to show you what we've got here in conjunction with um obviously removing um truck uh wheels i've got a torque multiplier had it years actually don't use it very much but very handy so it fits together and you just walk a bit old-fashioned you just wind it and it and it undoes the what just nips the wheels off really yeah yeah just, just just does the breaking bit of it and uh, from then onwards if you can't do it uh, with a three quarter gun to start with that'll just get the tension off and just wind them off with that yeah to the left under here we just got like a butane blow torch to warm some bolts prop shaft bolts off uh, especially on the tippers and that where they're corroded and that if you possibly might have to cut them off but you try this first a bit of heat and that does sometimes work let's move on to next locker uh, we got a saw in here. Um, we got a crowbar. And this is my main airline I use to blow up the units. Uh, a spare trailer board in case any problems with the cordless. Uh, some wheel stands. You say whatever you do, really, 
because a lot of our stuff solo the european stuff you have to get it up on some stands you can't just do one lift with forks like you may do with a higher axle american truck so everything has to be pre-lifted really uh, with the european trucks we pick up so wheel stands you just say you've got to use them all the time get them up get the stands under get it safe then you can work underneath them right okay and uh, here we just got like a breaker bar and a few um bits and pieces what we got here a bit of pry bar and uh a pair of stilsons and that at the back and uh scaffolding pole so we can get a little bit of lift lever on them but it's so, so easy to use that three quarter gun it does so much power really to be honest with you it's a lot safer than trying to use this right we've got a lot of uh lifting forks all different sizes and the main thing about these forks is when you've put the axle the axle's got to sit right at the bottom of the fork it can't sit up on the sides it's got to fit right at the bottom and there and you're saying this height just keeps it from moving back and forth you say we have these little collars add a little bit more height for instance this is the ideal fork uh, for, for a lot of daft trucks but you say they're a little bit low the dafts now with these new sump pans and it's a little bit low using these forks um near the crosshead so and this little collar here just adds a little bit of height and it's surprising how much difference that makes really just gives you an extra few inches and that so you're not going to rub on the sump pan or anything there we go that's what you use them for so i'm going to get some other forks out in a bit and show you uh these are other pedestals um wide angled pedestals or offset and um, yeah we've got some chain forks at the back as well but you say certain forks we know automatically what what fits the trucks for these bottom ones would be mans mainly use these um on the volvos you say the dafts and scanias and these wider forks they fit on a cross member of the 400 buses so you get to you to know what you're going out to save your hunting around underneath what fork fits best right okay that's that locker there right uh next locker we got this is a heated uh, hand wash um, station I've got some soap in there and some blue roll just to clean your hands up and that get any oil that have come through the gloves on there these are different test points that we can fit on air dryers or um, on air tanks that's all they are I made it made a few up myself really because I normally use this one on a Mercedes so you can blow um, one into the air suspension and one in for the brakes and uh, yeah just another little one I made up myself really yeah, these are smaller Susie leads and that. We've got some palm couplings for European trucks. We pick up sometimes. Longer Susie leads, some just blocks of wood. Uh, a few bungees always handy and that, an extra airline and um, a few little rubber um, things I've got that are candy. They can fit into the into the axles, get a bit more resistance maybe on, on if you've got like, um, possibly you'll probably use that on like a Scania bus where where the axle's pretty much straight there's no sort of u-bolts to butt up to so you have to chain them from the sides to stop them sliding possibly you use it on that this is thinner rubber actually actually to what i had before i'm not sure how long they last they're only in a tube but i'm gonna i'll try them out and see how, we, see how they go right um the brilliant cordless trailer board won't be about this really for safety wise alone really safe you walking down the side of the trucks trying to put you know a couple of extensions in you just whack that on the back put it on uh you know and it seems to work i've had this a year now already no problems with the batteries i keep it well charged up there's a little charge station here where i charge me um electric air guns extra susie lines here and a grease gun to reg regularly um grease the boom the uh, main pivot point uh, uh so we've got battery pack there which a lot of these buses now and, and coaches you say you can't just put air into them the suspension comes up you've physically got to have um power in the battery so just put the battery uh, connect the battery to the battery charger get some air into it then you can get the suspension up they are very low now so that's very handy to, to use sometimes yeah just an odd bit of bin here really we've got um air connectors we get a lot of these old buses and uh you know the airlines tend to get brittle when they break so uh, if you can actually hear once uh once you've got the vehicle lifted and got some air into it where the air problem is you can put one of these connectors in and uh yeah stops any air leaking out and it's obviously easier to tow then because 
because the suspension will come up on the bus and obviously the brakes will come off so it's quite handy uh, these little test points here we can wind into air tanks uh, what have you a few little tank bungs as well and um, just a few little bits and pieces you find that come in handy really you know through, through the years you pick a few things up just a few little sod, sods here really like yeah Okay, so we've got some, what have we got in here? So oh, some more air con connectors here. Underneath here, I think I just got three um, lots of bolts. I'd say hardly use them, but they're, they're there. <laughs> if you ever need a bolt at all, I've got a few there. Extra grease cartridge. And that, yeah, Susie lines and and that, whatever, yeah, really. And that's that locker there. Right, and yeah, we missed my toolbox. Right, we tend to do more half shafts now. Um, than prop shafts due to the air suspension there's so many pipes underneath these trucks now to actually remove the half shaft and strap sorry to move the prop shaft up and strap it up uh say so three quarter um drive sockets i tend to use these a lot more um with that three quarter gun these heart and got a few half inch sockets but as you say after a while they do tend to break quite you know not that long really haven't they're not the expensive ones like draper sealy but i don't tend to last too long i haven't got any snap-ons got worried about paying the money for them and losing them to be honest with you oh I'll tell you i've got one snap-on i think one eight one eighteen but yeah but these drape draper ones seem to be pretty good that three quarter gun i've had no problems with them since i use them but there's only set sockets you tend to use these other ones um you know you just say j just sat there for show really so underneath here we've got a commercial socket set underneath there and what we got here um, variety of spanners and that little cutting disc to uh, cut the prop shaft um, bolts off maybe if you if you kind of undo them and start rounding off some airlines and gauges just say grips and whatever um some long reach spanners you say these these are not any posh spanners at all on here you know it'd be nice to have some nice snap-ons i could um polish every day but i don't get time for that and these sort of get abused really outside the road in the rain and whatever uh got a few sort of I say snap on oh i actually have got a few uh snap on euro tools i've got a few of them my dad gave me a set of these years ago actually i don't know they're real snap ons are they i don't know somebody might be able to tell me but yeah they seem to be all right uh yeah a few nielsen's nothing special draper and uh mainly use this one to what wind off the 24 mil um brake chambers on the tractor units where you can't get a ratchet or a gun there mainly that all that gets used for that one there and a few bits and pieces all right just a few odd sockets here and a few sort of specialist ones i would say i suppose i'll, I'll keep connected with little extensions yeah this one mainly all that does is a uh, scan your tipper because these little torque bolts so that's purely linked into that to wind them off uh, got another torque bolts this is a for a 400 um dennis Envaro 400 new ones rather than gone 27 mil bolts they've gone for these kind of torque bolt designs so yeah so that's that for and it's just a few little bits and pieces really nothing uh thing a few, few um a few uh what we've we got here little grips and whatever and um just but as you say it's not very tidy because it's aimed to roll around all over the place but i know where everything is anyway uh these bolts here these are puller bolts for the scania a half shaft hub so we use them to pull them out rather than start whacking the the cap to try and get it off a few uh allen keys these are sort of bolts uh, caging bolts we use for the for the trailers if you've got problems with a brake chamber on a trailer yeah you won't find these on the european um tractor units these are purely for trailers and i know in america i've seen them a few videos they've ever seen to have them on them on their tractor units but not not with the europeans and they're normally 24 mil um brake chambers for them we wind off and the top here we've got um oh just, just a saw and a few more sockets and smaller socket set and uh, a few air air uh, pipes at all to come in handy if there's a few broken pipe and i might put an extension right i think that's it now actually yeah that's one side anyway right let's have a go the other side uh starting with the the rear locker we've got two retractable air leads that run from this locker uh mainly use these two retractable ones that go around the tractor unit to the trailer so this lead will be like your yellow susie so it's be like your service lead to the 
trailer. So this is like a break-in lead. And this one is your air supply. So this will keep the suspension up and keep um, the brakes off. That's a continued feed to the trailer. So that's your break-in one. And that will be supplying air to it. And this other air coupling here, we will connect this to um, the tractor unit. So we've got free air connections at the back there. So in the locker here, we also got an adapter that fits onto the crosshead of the truck just up there. And you say it's got two purposes. We can we can actually attach the fixed um, tow pole, tow pole, tow pole <laughs> into here, and it's just a re big retaining um, pin that'll keep that in there located. And at the top, that's where the that's where the fifth wheel coupling connects into there. And uh, just show you the fifth wheel coupling here. This is where that connects to. Uh, works pretty much the same as a normal tractor unit fifth wheel um, would work where it's got jaws where the pin locates into and uh, behind it we've got yeah we actually got a heavy duty pin to keep it all um, in place a couple of half shaft covers a volvo and a daf and a little one for a bus behind that uh, a few wheel chocks on here and in the middle we've got some uh, high pedestals that's what they are. They fit on the crosshead and the forks, little forks attached to that. That's a medium size one. I mainly use these for rear lifting where you need extra height to get onto the chassis rail and get past the tail lift. Um, and that's why you need the extra height, really. Okay, some high, uh, small, quite smaller, but high forks, therefore. A couple of old forks there, mainly I use them for pre lift. Got quite a few um, straps mainly to um, tidy up um, damaged bodies that are truck bodies that have hit bridges or whatever and keep everything secure keep the load in right going to the middle locker here uh, you say we got uh, four um, snatch blocks four big snatch blocks at the top so we run two inches and we've got four snatch blocks for that combination we've got a lot of uh, pulling power uh, to the left we've got all these chains um, all hanging up there, all rated and whatever. A few tensioners, ratchet step variety and the chain dog. Um, obviously we've got a record bar there, a bit like a big pry bar. And in the middle here, these three um, hunks of metal, they fit together and they're commercial wheel grids. So mainly for coaches that haven't got a beam axle so you have independent suspension so you haven't got a lot of strength for, and you haven't got a lot of places to put your lifting fork so so the wheels fit into like a framework and it rides on that suspension uh, these are little um, ratchet straps that little locate onto the onto the the, the main um, beam of the of the wheel frame and these are the straps we have two straps per wheel one side and obviously two the other uh, we've got some big heavy duty shackles here all rated and that uh, some pins which locate uh, all these little holes together so it all slots together I'll show you uh, in another video when I can get all this out I've got a bit more time and sort of show you how it all fits together a broom and shovel and a small little crowbar here uh, these are extensions here that actually fit onto the top of the cross head so um so if you need to do a wider pick i would say or maybe a um a double decker bus for instance comes to mind we need to reach out to suspension arms um you can connect them to the top of the cross head and it gives you a wider pick gives you a bit more um coverage what you can actually collect this locker here we got extendable ladder and uh, we've got some um, road cones uh fire extinguisher and some um, winching slings two 20 ton um, bottle jacks and I've got selection various selection of a uh, screwing tow and eyes uh, this is for a DAF for, uh, for example and we've got Iveco Mercedes and uh, and some um, tow pins as well um, yeah with the European trucks um, you only get one um, tow and eye supplied with the vehicle not two but you actually get two holes uh, for the tow and eyes to locate in so having an extra um, a spare tow and eye 
you know, is, is a godsend really when we have to winch them out of ditches rather than just rely on the, the strength of a one toe and eye, we can put another toe and eye in and be able to give it a good, uh, good pull really and spread the load. Yeah, so that's what's in this locker here. Moving on to the front locker now. Uh, we've got a spare bag of granules. Uh, the top here, um, unopened, these are. We've got um, two recovery slings. Uh, spare ones there. We've got another two down here that I have used before. Yeah, with these um, recovery slings, yeah, the idea is that it spreads the load. If you're getting something out of a ditch where these endless loops can bite in a little bit, you know, we can just spread the load a little bit with these wider um, slings. Yeah, and these winching um, straps we've got here, um, we can sort of um, go around an axle like that and um, it saves, saves any damage to um, the paint uh, or the chassis uh, of, of the vehicle we're um, winching. You say compared to sort of the chains that tends to dig in and mark them. So they're, you know, they're very, very good, very useful. And I've got four of them on the truck. Um, some extra um, shackles at the front as well, slightly smaller ones at the front. I'll show you a control panel that controls uh, all the beacons and the loading lights. Just put all the lights on for you now. Right, that's the complete lights to the loading lights. So we've got loading lights down the sides, over the top of the flyer, down the back, on the underlift. You're saying down this side as well, so we've got plenty of uh, loading lights, so we've got good, uh, good visibility at night. Okay, right, okay, that's the loading lights, so it's all controlled by this touch screen panel. And I'll take the loading lights off and I'm just going to put the beacons. Um, the beacons, so we've got three stages of the beacons, so we've got the uh, the top one on the flyer, uh, we've got the little side ones and uh, we've got the front um, strobes, the front grille. There we go, that's a beacon. Do you say we cannot um, automate them any way I want really? So it's three stages. You say we've got some little ones at the back as well, from behind as well. So. Uh, yeah, we've got quite a lot of lights on this truck. There we go, that's the beacons on now. Okay. Yeah, it's all controlled by this little panel and I've got another little panel in the, in the cab as well. So we've got um, two ways of uh, controlling the beacons. Before I get out the cab, I can put them on and also uh, alter them from this uh, rear locker. That's great, thanks very much and uh, see you soon.